trainer at Worldwide School. Uh, and of course, uh, the very important question is, uh, can you can you hear me well? Because, well, this is very important. I'd like to know if you can hear what I'm what I'm saying. If you could just uh, type some replies in the in the chat box, then I will get the uh, confirmation that <laughs> what I'm what I'm saying is actually well audible. All right, excellent. Some positive answers. So I'm I'm happy that you, that you can hear me. So once again, uh, welcome to today's uh, tonight's webinar. And as you already know, uh, today we are going to discuss uh, some well differences between between British and uh, American English. Uh, and well, I'm sure that you you know most of them or, or quite quite a lot of them uh, because as as English language uh, users uh, well and learners I guess you you must have encountered some of them heard them and uh, I guess big part of this webinar will be just a kind of uh, revision for you uh, and well I will ask you a lot of questions basically so. Uh, I would like you to, to uh, participate in an, in an active way tonight. Uh, so, first of all, uh, well, I'll tell you what, what we are going to, to do exactly. Uh, we will focus on, on three areas um, of, of uh, English language. So, basically, uh, three areas of differences between British and American English. And, well, uh, the first uh, area that we will uh, look at is vocabulary. As you, as you know, um, well, there are lots of, lots of words, um, well, and differences between words, uh, between British and American English. So, British people use different words, um, and American people use different words for, well, to describe the same things or objects. So, first of all, we're going to focus on the vocabulary aspect of um, of the differences between these two variations of, of English. Uh, then we are going to have a quick look at some typical spelling differences. And, well, the third part of, of the webinar uh, will we'll focus on, on grammar, as uh, there are some, uh, well, significant differences uh, with regards to, well, grammar between these two variations of, of English language. And at the end, uh, we'll do a kind of a quiz. So basically, um, apart from the questions that I will be asking you along the way, uh, we'll have a little quiz at the end, uh, just to check uh, your knowledge, not only from, from uh, the material that we will cover during this webinar, but maybe something more, more general. Um, well, things that you might already know and be pretty familiar with. Uh, so. You know the plan. Uh, let's let's get down to it. So uh, first thing we're gonna look at uh, is the vocabulary. So differences between words. So different words describing the same things uh, in American and in British English. So uh, let's start with with vocabulary. There are quite a lot of, of words that are different. Mm -hmm. So first of all, on this on the slide we have some some words. On the left we have British words. Uh, the right side is is empty for now. Um, well, there's space for, for American equivalents of these of these words. Uh, the first word for today is uh, trainers. So, anyone uh, can anyone tell me what is the American equivalent of of the British word trainers and, and what the trainers are actually? Does anyone know? If you do know, just type in your answer in the in the chat, and we'll we'll see. What the trainers? Okay, I can see the first answer. Uh, sneakers. Yes, absolutely. So in British sneakers, in American, uh, sorry, in American sneakers in British trainers, these are just sports shoes. Yeah, shoes we use for for, for doing different kinds of sports. Uh, very good answer. I will not uh, show the equivalents yet. Let's focus on on uh, the second word, which is uh, waistcoat. Well, this is a well typically. British thing that we can associate with a British uh, gentleman. Do, do you know of the word waistcoat? What what is it actually? A waistcoat. If you imagine a, a British uh, gentleman wearing a, a suit or a tuxedo, this is an uh, important important part. 
Oh, and we have a question in the mean, uh, on, on the chat. Uh, what, what caused these linguistic differences? Uh, well, basically, uh, there are lots of cultural uh, differences between uh, British and Americans. Basically, as you remember uh, from, from history, well, Americans wanted to, to gain independence from, from the British Empire. Uh, and, well, part of uh, underlining the fact that they're independent, uh, well, they changed the spelling, they simplified the spelling of some words, and also they, they decided that they will they will use different vocabulary for, for different things, uh, just to, to show that they are different and they are no longer part of the English Empire. Uh, yes, and we have an answer that a uh, waistcoat is a, is a vest. So basically, it is like a sleeveless piece of garment. Uh, it's like a third part of the suit. Like suit usually consists of trousers, jacket, and underneath the jacket on the shirt. Uh, gentlemen or men wear waistcoats or, or vests. Uh, braces. This is also part of clothing. Um, and what's the what's the American uh, word for for braces? Uh, just to help you with that, uh, this, these are the things that uh, keep your trousers in in place so they don't fall down if they are a bit too too loose and they go like around your shoulders from the back to front or from front to to back so um any anyone what's the american word for for braces that's a bit tricky um in american they, they call them uh suspenders because basically like kind of logical yeah like trousers are or suspended on 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 suspenders or on braces um Continuing with the garments, with clothing, another word is dungarees in British. And what are, what are dungarees? That's a kind of special piece of clothing uh, used by some people. So what are, what are dungarees? Any idea? Well, these are like um, trousers. But, um, well, they don't finish on your waistline. They go a bit higher. And part of them are also like braces or, or, or suspenders. So uh, in Polish, we, we call them ogrodniczki. Yeah? And uh, in, uh, in American English, uh, the word for them is overalls. Um, and the last word uh, on this slide is also part of uh, garments, clothing, dressing gown. So this is something that we, we usually wear in the evening when we take off our, our daily clothes and put on some, well, something before taking a bath or a shower or afterwards. Um, and in American, it's kind of maybe more logical uh, because we call it a, a bathrobe. Yeah? And the, the good Polish equivalent for, for this would be just schlafrock, right? So summing up this slide, trainers, sneakers, uh, waistcoat, vest, braces, suspenders, dungarees, overalls and dressing gown versus uh, bathrobe. Uh, let's uh, let's continue. Um, some more words. Uh, this one is easy. Wardrobe. Basically, wardrobe is a place, uh, well, a piece of furniture where we keep our, our clothes. And what's the uh, American equivalent of, of a wardrobe? Because this is like typically a British word. Um, anyone? What is a wardrobe in, in American English? I'm sure you, you 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 know the word. You must have heard it more than once. This is a, a closet, just a closet, like to keep a skeleton in a closet. Yeah, we have a similar expression in in Polish language. Uh, trousers. What's the American for trousers? Any any idea? Pants. Exactly. Very good. These are pants. Uh, zip. Well, basically, yeah. Zip is a is a is a part of of uh, different. Um, articles of clothing that basically can do up or zip up or zip down um, and the American version is very very similar yeah it's just called a, a zipper so zip versus zipper Polish equivalent is of course suvak right uh, nappy well this is something uh, that little babies wear yeah that pre prevents uh, well it keeps the urine inside yeah just for them not to stain the, the clothes that are wearing. And there's this kind of strange American equivalent of a, of a nappy. Has, has anyone heard 
So what's the what's the word? What's the American word for for a nappy? Pumpers <laughs> is one of the answers. Uh, diaper. Yes, this is a correct answer. Uh, diaper. And well, the last uh, um, expression here is Wellington boots. Um, short version is wellies. Um, so well. What what about Wellington boots? What what are they? And well, of course the name comes from from the name of some guy who invented Wellington boots. And basically, mm, we, we wear them in the rain, yeah, just not to get our feet wet. Uh, and American equivalent is, is kind of logical uh, because we just call them rubber boots. Yes, in Polish we just call them kalosha, right? So wardrobe is closet, trousers, pants, zip zipper. Nappy, diaper, and Wellington boots, uh, or rubber boots in in American English. Um, now, the first word is a uh, is a vegetable, aubergine, uh, which well in Polish we, we call it bakwajan, but in in American they use a, a totally different word, somehow connected with the with the shape of this of this vegetable. Uh, does anyone know uh, what's the uh, American equivalent of aubergine? That's a tricky question and not a very popular word. Uh, but in American, they, they just call it an eggplant. Egg like the egg laid by, by hands of chickens, yeah? So aubergine versus eggplant. Uh, beetroot. Oh, this, this vegetable is very popular in our country. We even make, make soup uh, from it. And uh, in American, uh, they use a shorter version. Just call it a beet, right? Um, candy floss. Well, this is something that children love. Uh, it's kind of kind of sweet, and uh, well, whenever we go on a trip to a zoo uh, or some uh, fair outside, children love asking their parents to, to, to get some for them. Um, and the American equivalent is uh, cotton candy, which is uh, well, in our language we call it something like vata sukrova. Yeah? So candy floss versus cotton candy, and a classic. Yeah, everyone I guess knows the. Um, Everyone who watched Sesame Street yeah, should know the equivalent of the word biscuit. Of course, yes, many answers, many correct answers. It's a cookie. So, uh, yeah, my favorite character from Sesame Street was uh, definitely a cookie monster. And chips, which is quite tricky words, because in, in British English, basically, like one of typical dishes in, let's say, <laughs> British cuisine, if there is some like British cuisine, is fish and chips, yeah? Um, so, uh, basically... What's the equivalent of chips in American English? French fries, exactly. Lots of correct answers. Uh, yeah, so aubergine versus eggplant, beetroot, beet, candy floss, cotton candy, biscuit, cookie, and chips versus French fries. So if we go to, to um, some English fish and chips restaurant, we ask for fish and chips, but in, in American uh, McDonald's, we'll ask for yeah, burger and fries. Uh, some more words. Cutlery. Well, what is cutlery? Cutlery are well things we use for for eating, like forks, spoons, uh, and and knives, of course. Um, anyone? Uh, does anyone know the American equivalent of, of the word um, cutlery? Not very popular, I guess, but but sometimes it's it's used. Maybe you've heard it in some some uh, TV series. Um, the American version is actually a silverware. You don't use cutlery, they say silverware, um, and a jug. A jug is basically um, a container for, for liquid. Uh, it's quite big, and you can pour some liquid from a jug into, into glasses uh, before drinking, right? And what's the, what's the um, American equivalent of, of, a, of a jug? Any, any ideas, anyone? Well, the, the American word for that is a pitcher. So jog versus pitcher. Uh, gammon. Well, actually, not many people use this word nowadays, gammon. Uh, in American, they just say ham. Yeah, it's a special kind of meat, ham. But in traditional British word for that is, is gammon. Um, maize. Another British word uh, not very commonly used because uh, majority of people rather use the, the American word for this. And what is what is maize like? We eat it quite often. Animals eat it as a kind of thing that grows in, in many fields. In Poland, it's grown as well. Um, 
American word for maize is just corn. So that's the, the equivalent. And it's basically, nowadays, uh, most people uh, use the, the American word corn. And minced meat, mm, yeah, like used for some, some dishes, um, in American English, traditionally we say ground meat. So, mielone, right? So, cutlery, silverware, jog pitcher, gammon ham, maize versus corn, and minced meat uh, versus ground meat. All right. Um, let's continue. Car park. That's not the classic uh, example. So, anyone, anyone, can anyone give me an equivalent of a, of a car park in American English? This is a place where we can leave our car, yeah? But what, what do the, the Americans say? Parking lot. Very good. Thank you for, for the answer. Uh, crossroads. So basically a place where, where two roads meet. Uh, but what's, what's the more American word for that? Starting with letter. Exactly. Junction. Very good answer. Thank you for that. So crossroads is just, just a junction. Uh, boot. And this is not like a long shoe. Uh, for some cold weather, but this is a part of a car. So this is a part of a car, usually usually at the back where we can put our luggage or suitcase. Exactly, I have an answer already. In American, we call this part of a, of a car a, a trunk, like a tree trunk. The main part of a tree is also called a trunk, and also uh, elephants, like long, a long nose of an elephant, is also called a trunk. So boot versus trunk, very good. Uh, driving license in, in British, uh, something very similar in American, uh, but usually they, they say driver's license with apostrophe and S. Not driving license, but driver's license. Uh, and sticking to the cars, like if you have manual transmission in, in a car, we usually use, a, well, in British, we use gear lever or lever yeah, to, to switch uh, gears. Um, in American, um, they call it like a gear shift or a gear stick. And if you, if you have an, uh, well, it's kind of unusual to have a manual transmission. Uh, in America, but but if you if you have it, then you can say that you you drive the stick yeah, to drive a car with manual transmission. So car park versus parking lot, crossroads, intersection, boot, trunk, driving license versus driver's license, uh, and gear lever versus gear shift. Um, another classic lorry. What is a lorry? Like most people, I guess use uh, use the American equivalent, and it's it's uh, much more popular, I guess. So what, how, how Americans, van, something bigger than a van, actually, it's a truck, exactly. So a uh, lorry in British, but a truck in, in American. Uh, motorbike, so basically a bike with an engine, yeah, like Harley Davidson. Uh, how do they call them in, in, in American English, uh, typically? Uh, the first part stays the same. It's, it's still motor, but they, they change a bike. Um, well, another word for, for, for bike. The one that doesn't have an, an engine? I'm sure I'm sure you, you know it very well. Motorcycle, yes. So American for, for motorbike is a motorcycle. Uh, petrol, yeah. So how do we how do we call petrol in American? Gas, of course, thank you very much. Roundabout. So this is like a circular intersection, yeah. Very popular in um, in Britain. Basically, a majority of intersections in Britain are, are roundabouts. So, like in Polish, we call them rondo, kind of. Yeah. Uh, and what's the, what's the American uh, equivalent of a of a roundabout? Well, in America, everything is is bigger. Yeah. In in, in our country, in Britain, roundabouts are rather small. Uh, one lane is enough. But but in America, well, due to the size, uh, they call them like traffic circles. So like. They're usually bigger. Uh, we can say that there is a small difference between roundabout and a traffic circle because traffic circle is usually bigger and has more lanes, not just one. But you can you can uh, drive on many whales on a, a lanes on, on a traffic cycle. Uh, and also another part of the car indicator. Basically, if you want to turn left or, or turn right, you should use an indicator basically yeah, to to show uh, your intention yeah, that you're turning left or right. Uh, and how how do we call indicators in in American English? Uh, what, what do our eyes do constantly when they when they close for for a fraction of a second? Uh, it's done automatically. Do, do you know the word for that? We, we, we our eyes or our eyelids actually do it all the time. Uh, it's like it's a reflex. It's automatic. So uh, we we blink. Yeah, and in, in American, 
indicators are, are called blinkers, right? So lorry versus truck, motorbike, motorcycle, petrol, gas, roundabout, traffic circle, and indicator versus a blinker. Uh, some more. Uh, well, the first one is also connected with a with a car. Windscreen. Yeah, it's the like the front glass uh, of a of a car. And uh, how is it called uh, in in American English? Uh, th the first part stays stays the same. So let let's keep wind, but we'll just need to change uh, the screen part into into something else. Um, also starting with with S basically. So they are not so much different, but but uh, windscreen in American is windshield, a windshield. Uh, pavement. This is something that we we walk on uh, when we are in a in a city. Yeah. Uh, and what's the, what's the American equivalent of a of a pavement? What do we walk on when you when you walk the streets of, of New York, for example? Because in London you are on a pavement. Yeah. And um, well, in American pavement is more like the road surface, yeah, but the, the place for, for people who walk in a city, in American we call it a, a sidewalk, a sidewalk. Uh, bonnet, back to cars, so this is the, the part of a car that covers the, the engine compartment, yeah? it's usually in the, in the front in most cars, uh, so if you, if you open up the bonnet you will see the engine. Um, in American uh, we use uh, another word, also, uh, well, this word can also mean something that is, uh, can cover your head, and it's a, a part of, of a kind of of a jumper, yeah. But you can also put something on your head, and it's a part of of a different um, article of clothing. So, uh, in in American, uh, we call it uh, a a hood, right? So bonnet versus hood, the part of the car that covers the engine. Uh, airplane. Well, we perfectly well know what an airplane um, is. In American, uh, well, the, the word is very similar, but the first part is different. Instead of aero, it's air, airplane. Uh, and the last word on this slide is a timetable. What is a what is a timetable? Well, basically, school. Well, children who go to school have a timetable with different classes, uh, with the timing shown for different classes, or you know, uh, have timetable on a on a bus stop uh, schedule exactly. Some good answers from, from you, thank you so much. It's, uh, it's of course, a, a schedule. So, windshield, sidewalk, hood, airplane, and, and schedule. Uh, holiday, that's another classic. So, <laughs> what's one American for holiday? We use a very similar word in, in our language. So, I'm just wondering who's going to type it in first. Uh, of course, vacation, thank you so much. Uh, headmaster. This is like the, well, the most important person in a in a school. So, uh, who is the most important person in a in a school? In British, it is the headmaster, or if it's a lady, it's headmistress. Yeah. Um, but what about what about American? This is a principal. Yeah. Break time. Well, between classes, um, children have have uh, like some short breaks. Uh, we also have breaks at at work. Uh, in America, well, if it's especially for a longer break, which which allows you to to uh, or allows the children to go out from the building and play some football uh, outside, uh, we we use the word recess. So break versus recess. Uh, rubber. Well, we all use rubber if we want to uh, get rid of something we wrote using a pencil. So what's the what's the American equivalent of rubber? I'm pretty sure you you know it. Start with the letter E. Eraser. Thank you very much. Exactly. And uh, a staff room. Well, this is uh, a special room in a school. Uh, well, not only a school. Yeah, where, where teachers uh, go to spend their breaks if they are not in the corridor looking after children. Um, and the, the American equivalent is uh, is a teacher's lounge, like lounge at the airport. Yeah, is, is a place where you wait for for, for the airplane. But at school, it's called the teacher's teacher's lounge. So vacation principal says eraser and teacher's lounge. Uh, on stop. This is something we put at the end of a sentence, of an affirmative sentence. So in Polish, we just say kropka. Yeah, what's, what's the American for, for full stop? Uh, another meaning is something connected with a dot. Okay, we use dot in um, internet addresses or in email addresses like cnn.com, yeah, um, or wp.pl. 
or something. But uh, when you write, um, at the end of a sentence, you put a period. The correct word for that should be. But of course, dot also means the same, but not uh, not when you, when you write letters and sentences. Uh, dot is used um, when you write internet addresses or, or email addresses. Very good. Uh, dustbin or, or litter bin? Uh, how do we call uh, this in an American place? Like a bin where you, where you put um, rubbish. And what's the American word for, for rubbish, basically? Uh, typically, exactly, trash. Thank you so much. Uh, we also sometimes can use the word garbage. Yeah? So it's a trash can or, or a garbage can. But in most cases, a trash can. Uh, tap. Well, tap is in every kitchen and every bathroom. Yeah? Water runs from it. And in, the, in America, they sometimes use, uh, well, they also use the, the word tap. It depends on the region. But uh, they have also a, kind of a strange word for, for tap, uh, which is faucet. Very good. Uh, with funny spelling. The cinema. That's another classic. So what's, what's cinema in American English? Uh, theater. Okay. Uh, you, you used a, a British spelling for theater, but we have to uh, add something to the theater. Uh, this should be a, a movie theater. Yeah, but basically, yeah. At the end of every trailer, yeah, we can see in theaters next month or something. But yeah, uh, the, the correct term for the movie theater. And the garden, uh, what, what was more American word for, uh, for a garden? Starting with letter Y. Not very, not very typical. Uh, yard, exactly. Very good. Thank you. Yeah, so these are the American equivalents. Uh, let's continue. Flat, uh, meaning the place where you live, a part of block of, of flats. What's the, what's the American word for that? Sounds more luxurious, definitely, and we use it in, in Polish uh, to indicate that the flat is really big. Apartment, exactly. Very good. Lots of good answers. Uh, lift. So this is something we use uh, when we want to go up to some high floor. Uh, what's the American for, for lift? Elevator. Right. Thank you so much. Uh, reception. So when you when you go to, to the front, I mean to, to the hotel or to a company, they greet you at the reception. And what's what's more American phrase for a for a reception? Um, the place where they where they greet you downstairs usually, or before it gets into inside the company. Uh, front desk. Very good. The American equivalent equivalent is front desk. Uh, sweet shop. Well, what's American for sweet or sweets? And was the American for shop, because we have to substitute both words. Candy shop, or even uh, just to make it more American, candy is perfect, but shop, well, what's what's more American word for, for a shop? Also starting with S, I'm pretty sure you, you know it. It's a it's a store, yeah, so so like uh, it should be a candy store, just to make it like fully fully American. And torch, well basically torch, we use a torch when it's dark. Uh, and the lights are out uh, just to just to see what's in front of us. Now it runs on batteries. In the past, we used to just uh, light it on, on fire yeah? and, and flashlight. Very good. That's that's the correct answer. So uh, American word for torch is a is a flashlight. Uh, loo. That's a typically British word for um, for a toilet. Yeah. So uh, toilet is very popular and is used in both variations of, of English. But what's what's a more American uh, word for uh, for a loo? Because uh, loo is rather not used in American English. You can hear it in, in, in Great Britain. Oh, I need to go to the loo. Where's the loo? Uh, and uh, typically, American word is restroom. Well, I know just a good place for rest. But uh, trolley. Well, we use it for, for doing shopping. We, we put the, the things we want to buy in a, in a trolley. What's the what's the American word? If you buy something on, on Amazon. Uh, you, you put the products into it, and it's called a cart. Very good answer. Thank you so much. Uh, wash basin. This is uh, like something in the bathroom where you can wash your hands. Uh, but Americans rather use the, the the word for the same thing, which is in a, in a kitchen typically. Sink. Very good. Thank you. Pusher. Well, this is something that, that a kid sits in, and you push it. Yeah, if the kid is too small to walk, or when 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 the child gets gets tired. Uh, so, so uh, the American word for this is uh, is a stroller. Uh, torch again. Uh, my mistake. We know that a torch is a flashlight. So uh, restroom, cart, sink, stroller, flashlight. Yeah. Uh, autumn. Huh. What's the American word for autumn? 
is also a, a verb, a very popular verb that, well, leaves do it in, in autumn. What do they do when they mm, from from the trees? It's a fall, exactly. Ladybird, this is a very popular insect, like it's usually red and it has some, some spots on it. Uh, so Polish equivalent is, is uh, Biedronka, of course. Uh, and in American, we call it the lady bug. So not lady bird, but lady bug. Postcode, what's a postcode in American? Uh, we, we used this word uh, a bit earlier as a part of, of clothing. It's a zip code. Very good. Q, that's is my, one of my favorite words in, in British English. Uh, they queue, you know, everywhere for the bus, uh, you know, in shops, of course, uh, there are queues everywhere. And what's the, what's the American word for, for queue? Line. Thank you very much. To stand in line. In British, it's enough to say uh, Q. And another classic post. What's American for post? It's also used with the electronic equivalent. Of course, it's mail. Very good. So for ladybug zip code line mail. Uh, high street. This is like the, the main street of a part of a town. Uh, and this is exactly what, what, what the, the Americans say. So High Street is, is just the main street. Cello tape. Well, it's a special tape, sticky tape, we, we use uh, to, to stick things together. Uh, and what's the, what's the American equivalent of, of a cello tape? Uh, funnily, they, they use uh, part of Great Britain uh, within this name. It says scotch tape. So cello tape is scotch tape. Uh, mate. Mate is typical British. It means like a friend, somebody you know. It's like, hello, mate. Uh, what's a more American uh, word for, for like, collega? Starting with a, with a B, usually. So Americans will not use the word mate. They will say buddy. Hello, buddy. What's up, buddy? Uh, nil. Nil is basically, uh, it means nothing. Like, give a football score. Yeah, like, three nil. But in American, uh, very often they just say zero because nil is, is zero. And a caretaker, well, it's somebody who who uh, well cleans the place, look looks after the place. Uh, like we have caretakers at at school. Yeah, the, the ladies usually these are ladies who uh, sweep the floor and then clean the, the the toilets. And in American, we use the word janitor for that. So Main Street Scotch Tape Body Zero janitor. Uh, drafts. Drafts are like simplified chess. And, and how do we call them in, in American English? What are, what are drafts? The, the Polish word is, is warcaby. In American, uh, we call them uh, checkers. Checkers. Draw. In sports, a draw is, uh, well, a result like one to one. Zero, zero. Uh, in American, we call it uh, a tie. Yeah, so there was a tie at the end of a of a game. Fire brigade. What's a what's a fire brigade like? Uh, in American, uh, we rather use the word fire department. Yeah, for straspozarna. Uh, knots and crosses. This is like a, a very popular uh, game that children play on a piece of paper. Um, in American, we call it tic tac toe. Funny name, and a parcel. Parcel is something that, that the postman or a courier uh, brings. So what's well, kind of similar, but but a different one. Package. So parcel is just package. So checkers, tire, fire department, tic tac toe, package. Uh, phone box. Well, not very popular nowadays because everyone has like a mobile phone or two now. Uh, but in the past, they were quite popular. So uh, in America, we call them phone booth. Yeah, a pitch. A pitch is a place where you can play some sports like football. Uh, in American, uh, we call them uh, just a field. Yeah, so a pitch or a, or a field. Ice lolly. Well, basically, this is like an ice cream without any milk in it. Uh, in American, we call them popsicles. Yeah, mobile phone. That's a classic. So who can give me an equivalent of, of a mobile phone in American English? Cell phone, of course. Thank you very much. And takeaway. Well, uh, some food that you can take with you and eat outside or at home. Uh, in American, we usually call them a, a takeout. Yeah. So these are the American uh, counterparts. Uh, fizzy drink. What what do we call a uh, fizzy drink? Like Fanta, Coke in, in American uh, English.
This is a soda, of course. Um, then zebra crossing. So this is a place where pedestrians can can cross the street uh, safely. Well, I know it's safely because there are lots of accidents on, on zebra crossing, at least in, in our country. Uh, in America, we, we call it exactly. Thank you for the answer. Crosswalk. Very good. Crisps. So this is something made of potatoes. Um, and in America, actually, uh, they use the word we, we, we had before. Uh, so, uh, and it means something completely else in, in Great Britain. So crisps, uh, they call them chips in America. Potato chips, exactly. Thank you for the answer. Dummy. Dummy is something you put into a little baby's mouth when it's crying, yeah, just to keep it quiet. And in, in American, we, we use the word pacifier, yeah, just to pacify the baby. And uh, rubbish. Well, uh, speaking about, about the bin, the place where we put uh, rubbish, because this is not the word for... For, for litter, yeah. Uh, in, in America, we have garbage or, or trash, right? Uh, chemists, that's a place where you can buy medications usually. Uh, and what do we use in, in, in American English? There are like two words, let's say, for, for this. So, what are other words for, for, for the chemists where you can buy um, medication? Pharmacy is one, very good answer. And, and another one. Uh, is a uh, drugstore, yeah, so chemist versus pharmacy and drugstore. Railway, uh, well, the American word is very similar, at least the first part of it, uh, they call it a railroad, yeah. Off-license, hmm, a very important place, because in, in Britain, you, you go to buy alcohol to an off-license shop, and in, in America, basically, uh, we say a liquor store, yeah. Uh, diversion, well, when the road is closed, you need to find another route to your destination. Yeah? So in British uh, English, we call it diversion. In American, it's rather a detour. And flyover, well, the Polish equivalent of this is, is kind of like viadukt, right? Uh, in American, we call it exactly an overpass. Good answer. So these are the equivalents. Uh, curriculum vitae, so-called CV. What do we call it in, uh, in American English? It's kind of popular, I guess you, you should know. Starts with letter R. It's a resume, right? Uh, solicitor. Well, this is a, a lawyer, uh, which basically cannot represent you in, in court. Just gives you some legal advice. Uh, and uh, in in American, we call such a person attorney. Attorney at law. Uh, caravan. This is like a like car or a part of a car where you can you can um, sleep or live. Uh, quite popular in America. Many people live in, uh, not caravans, but trailer. Exactly. Very good answer. Pocket money. Yeah, like parents give their children some pocket money. In America, we call it an allowance. And spanner. This is like, like a tool. Um, in America, we call it a wrench or monkey wrench. Why monkey? I need to check. Uh, telly. This is a typical British word for television, of course, right? Return ticket. And what's the, what's the, um, well, American phrase for return ticket when you, when you buy a ticket both ways, yeah, this way and that. Uh, it's a round trip ticket, right? Uh, bum bag or belt bag is well kind of popular now because usually you wear it around your waist. Uh, now people wear them across their chest. They can keep your wallet, your phone in them. Uh, in America, we call them like a fanny bag. Uh, Anti-clockwise is like an different directions that, that the arms of the clock go. In American, we call it uh, counterclockwise, yeah? counter like against. Uh, a state car, well, usually a, a big car with lots of space at the back, which in Polish we, we call combi, right? Uh, in American, we call them station wagons. Yeah, so uh, these are the equivalents. And uh, last three terms, fringe. Fringe uh, is basically a part of, of your hair when you cut it like just above your eyes and it covers your, your, your forehead, right? So the, the American equivalent of fringe um, is banks. Public transport? Well, surprisingly, in America, they call it public transportation. And a, a jumper, that's that's another classic. What's what's more American word for a, for a jumper? Because jumper is usually a piece of clothing made of wool that you, that you wear when it's when it's cold. Uh, and what's the, what's the well, more American word for that? Uh, oh, come on. I'm sure you know. Sweater. Exactly. Very good. Thank you. Uh, all right. So these are just uh, some, some of the words uh, and vocabulary differences between British and American. Of course, 
Um, nowadays, uh, just these differences are, are, well, not so important, and uh, even British people started using some American words, and vice versa. But just for you to, to know and re revise or refresh some, some of, of these terms. Uh, now, let's have a look at, at common spelling differences. Um, first of all, words ending in uh, RE or ER. So these letters are kind of in different order. So center, fiber, litter, theater. Yeah? Uh, fiber is like, uh, no, buonic, yeah? uh, so if you look at the spelling, the, the end, the last two letters are in different um, order in British and American. Uh, another difference is with NCE or NSE, like words like defense, license, offense, pretense. Yeah, in America they spell them with S. And we have to thank Mr. Webster. Yeah, Webster, like he made American well, dictionary of American English, and he thought, yeah, let's let's simplify the spelling. Let's spell the words differently from from Great Britain. Yeah, uh, so this is what they do. Um, Another ending, eyes, yes, apologize, organize, recognize, hypnotize. In American, we spell them with a z, z yeah, not S. Um, then behavior, neighbor, flavor, color. As you can see, American spelling is much, much different. They drop the, the U from, from these words. Um, and some tricky Latin or Greek words like uh, leukemia, uh, which is biawatchka, yeah, maneuver. Uh, estrogen, which is the female hormone, right? And pediatric, uh, which is the adjective from pediatrician. Um, American spelling, as you can see, is much, much easier. They dropped the additional letter, which was in the original Greek or Latin spelling. Uh, okay, and uh, when you add the ing ending or, or ed ending, in British, we, we, we uh, double the L, like traveling, traveler, fueled, cancelled. In American, it's enough to keep just one L. However, uh, the noun from cancel, like cancellation, has a double L in both um, American and and British. Uh, okay, and the, the last uh, thing, like some grammar differences. Uh, so let's have a, have a quick look at some sentences. Uh, so some differences uh, referring to uh, actions in the past that have effect in the present. So typical British sentences, um, like, Janet feels ill, she's eaten too much, or I can't find my wallet, have you seen it anywhere? So, um, in, in British English, uh, they really love present perfect tense, yeah? like have or has plus past participle. American, they just use past simple, yeah? she ate too much, did you see it anywhere? Yeah? So, Americans don't like present perfect, so, uh, you see, it's not a big mistake if we use past simple, Well, but don't do this during any tests, right? Because I guess we still learn like typical British, uh, but in America it's okay to use past simple, uh, which is great. Uh, another difference, uh, kind of similar, because we, with words already just and yet, which are again typical for present perfect. Are you going to the show tonight? No, I've already seen it. Is Joe here? No, he just has just seen. Uh, he has just left. In America, it's enough to use past simple. No, I already saw it. Uh, is Joe here? No, he just left. So again, the same difference, like present perfect in British, past simple in American. Great. Uh, collective nouns. Collective nouns describe groups of people. Yeah, My team is winning. The other team are all sitting. Which team is or are losing? So in, in British English, uh, collective nouns can be either plural or singular. So you can use is or are. Uh, in American, they are always uh, singular. Yeah, My team is winning. Which team is losing? Right. Um, phrases with, with have and take, like have a bath. Have a little nap, have a shower, have a short holiday, uh, have a rest. In, in American, people rather use take. Yeah, take a bath, take a nap, take a shower, take a short vacation, um, take a rest. So have versus versus take. And some model verbs, right? You don't need to go to school. Oh, they, they needn't go to school. So needn't mm, is basically the same as don't need, but it's, it's typically British. They, they don't use it in America. Um, I shall or will be home later. Uh, they don't use shall in American. And shall we uh, ask him to come with us? In American, they would rather use should. Should we ask him? So uh, no shall, uh, either will or should. Uh, and definitely they don't say needn't in American. And some prepositions like at the weekend, yeah, at university, different from or different to. Uh, and I promised to write to her. In British, this to, um, I promised to write to her is, is obligatory. In American, we can say, 
uh, on the weekend. Yeah, it's correct. Like in high school, different from or different than. And uh, I promised the writer this uh, additional two is not needed in American. Um, and let's finish with a quiz. So basically some questions for you now. Um, the first one, if a previous speaker asks you to put something in the boot, do you put it in a shoe, a car or a cupboard? What's the correct answer? Car, of course, thank you. Correct answer is car. Another one, uh, what's the correct UK spelling of this unit of measurement? Which is of course kilometer. So what's, what's the correct spelling? It's all about the ending, right? A, right, this is the correct British spelling. Uh, what do people in the US call this? Flashlight lamp, a torch. Of course, A, a flashlight. Um, then, if someone in the UK asks you for a lift, what do they want you to do? Take them somewhere in the car, pick them up and carry them, help them with something. Uh, take them somewhere in a car. Yeah, can you give me a lift? Right, exactly. Uh, where would people in the US go to watch a James Bond film? Cinema, movie mall or movie theater? C, of course, that would be a movie theater, of course. Uh, if someone admires your jumper in the UK, do they like your trampoline, your woolly top or your sleeveless dress? It is a jumper. B, the woolly top, exactly, good. Um, in the US, what are you using if you go to work by bus? Public carriage, public transport, public transportation. A C, of course, public transportation, very good. Uh, and what do people in the UK call this? Uh, I hope you can see what the <laughs> thing in the picture correctly. Packet of crisps, packet of chips, and a packet of fries. And the answer is, of course, a uh, packet of crisps. Correct. Thank you. Uh, if a US speaker says your bangs are too short, what are they giving an opinion on? Your curtains, your drums, your hair? That's, of course, your hair. Perfect. Uh, and who would say, I am planning to take a holiday in Italy. A speaker of American English, speaker of British English, or both? Uh, speakers of American and British English. That's a speaker of, of uh, actually British English because uh, take is a bit confusing. You can have a holiday or take a holiday, but, but definitely in America they would say a vacation, right? So that would be would be used by, by a British speaker. Uh, and uh, who would say I'm going back to my apartment? American uh, English speaker, British English speaker, or both, of course, speaker of American English, right. And who would say my favorite football team are playing today? Um, are, so that would actually be exactly British. Good, good answers. Because uh, in, in American uh, team is playing, right? Mm, who would say, I have never gotten arrested? We haven't discussed this, because in America they use different uh, third forms, verbs, but it's like uh, a tricky, tricky question. Um, yeah, that would be used by an American speaker, because in, in British we just use got, got, but in America they, they, they keep this form gotten. So if you, if you hear gotten, uh, the speaker is definitely American. That was the last question for, for today. Thank you so much for uh, attending this, this webinar, uh, I hope we, we managed to, to revise some of the most common differences uh, between British and American English. So once again, thank you for your participation. Uh, I hope uh, you enjoyed it uh, and you remember some of the stuff we discussed. Uh, have a good evening. Uh, thank you very much and well, enjoy yeah, this beautiful summer evening. Thank you. Bye-bye.